Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me. I have a really fun video today. Today we get to sew something, but we're not sewing on just any old machine. We are sewing on a vintage Singer. This was my great grandmother's machine. Uh, if you will remember my last video, we got it all cleaned up, uh, got it all lubricated and fixed some of the wiring issues uh, that it had. And now she's up and running, uh, running really good. So uh, I've been really excited to uh, make a project on it and I'd love to bring you along for that process. I've chosen a really cool vintage block that I thought would be really fun to uh, sew on this old machine. So uh, I'd like to show you that. Let's head on over to the design board and we'll take a look at what I have planned for us today. So as you can see, I've got a lot going on here on this big design wall. Um, this is just kind of my creative process and how I like to approach every new project. Um, I just kind of like to lay everything out and kind of get everything in my head out here so I can organize it and figure out how I want to proceed. So I like to audition fabrics and look at the colors and kind of how they all interact together and, and that really helps me plan everything out. So um, as I said, I wanted to do a vintage block uh, because we're sewing with a vintage machine. That seemed like a good idea. And so I searched online and I was able to find this block here. It's called Churn Dasher, uh, not to be confused with Churn Dash that we all love so much. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you can probably get the Churn Dash block out of these same pieces. You just have to rearrange them and turn a few things around. Uh, but I just really loved this block. Um, it's originally just a two color block, the color and the background fabric. And I thought I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit and add a little bit more color into it and kind of make it my own. So uh, that's what I did here. I just kind of practiced a few different layouts and uh, kind of added a, in a little more color uh, to it, which I think is really cute. And I think I'm gonna go with one of these uh, instead of the two color blocks. So I did finish one block. Um, this is the finished one. This is actually, this layout is called Farmer's Daughter, which I thought was pretty cool. I can relate to that myself. And I'm sure my great grandmother can relate to that as well. So uh, that one was pretty fitting. Um, this turns out to be a 10 and a half inch block. And I think if we get four of these in a row, I think it's gonna make a really nice table runner. So that's what I'm going for today. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go with these three layouts here. And uh, I still need to figure out a layout on my fourth block. And uh, for that, I'll need to cut some more pieces and, and make some more half square triangles there. Uh, as far as my coloring goes, um, I incorporated this fabric here, which I thought was super cute, and this one here. These are actually from the Songbook uh, fabric line, which is one of my favorites. I just love all the colors and, and flowers in that, in that line. Um, and I'm thinking I might not include this one. Um, I think it's just got too much contrast. I really like this uh, teal color in there. It kind of brings out the teal flowers in this fabric here. Um, I thought about incorporating some orange to bring out the orange in these little flowers here, and I just don't really think it goes well with everything else, I don't know. But that's why I do this. Um, that's why you audition your fabrics, you kind of get a feel for, for what it's gonna be like when it's all finished up, and, and this is super helpful. So. Anyway, I need to make some half square triangles and uh, cut a few more squares and then we can start uh, the layout on our fourth block and get this all sewn together. Okay, for this churn dasher block, uh, it's actually really, really easy. Um, we make some half square triangles and we make some two and a half inch squares. That's really all you need. Um, so we are actually going to do the method of making eight half square triangles at a time. 
And uh, this is a pretty cool method. Uh, normally I just make uh, two at a time with two little squares, two either two and a half inch squares or five inch squares, but uh, this time we are using a six inch square and we'll get eight HSTs out of that. So we are going to need a couple six inch squares and I've got one of my background fabric, one of my color, so we're good to go there. We're going to get that sewn together in a sec. We need a couple uh, two and a half inch squares out of this pretty print fabric here. I just love this fabric. It reminds me of Little House on the Prairie and that is I can really relate to that. I grew up on the prairie, so this is right up my alley. So we are just going to cut us a couple little two and a half inch squares here. And I love using scraps. I'm, as you can see, I'm using small pieces of fabric here. I am all about using up scraps. And I kind of think that's one of the things that great grandma would have done as well. Back in that day, they were using any fabric that they could get their hands on to make a quilt or, or whatever they were making. All right, so for the half square triangles, you are going to put your right sides together of your two six inch squares. Grab a pencil and we're just going to do a diagonal line. down both sides here, corner to corner, both ways. And I like to pin. I just don't like anything shifting around as I'm sewing. And that is ready for the machine. So when we get to the machine, we are just going to sew a quarter inch down each side of each of these lines. And then we'll cut it apart and we'll have eight half square triangles. So let's head over to the machine. All right, we are ready to sew now. So this is a Singer 2012. It is a great machine and just stitches beautifully. So I'm really excited to be using it. Um, I don't have a measurement on my plate down here. So I put a little tape there to give me my quarter inch seam. And like I said, we are just going to sew a quarter inch down each side of that pencil line that we drew. We'll get this back to the cutting mat and cut it apart and we'll have eight half square triangles. Okay, we got our six inch square sewn on each side of our diagonal lines here. So to cut this apart and get eight HSTs, we're just going to cut right down the middle of this square, so right on that three inch mark. And we'll do the same going this way, right down the center. And now you've got four that you can just cut right down that pencil line on each of these. This is a great way to make a bunch of half square triangles at the same time. I love this method. All right, so next step will be to iron these open. 
So we're going to head over to the ironing board here. We'll iron them all open. And after that, we will trim each of these to the two and a half inch square uh, so to match our two and a half inch square. So let's head over to the ironing board. All right, the iron is heated up. So we are just going to open each one of these half square triangles up, give them a nice little press. And then we'll be on to the next step, which is trimming them. It's very important to trim as you go. That way, once you get to the step of lining up all of your seams on your rows, everything's going to line up perfectly. All right, that's that. Now we'll trim them up. Okay, we just want to trim our HSTs to two and a half, and I am just going to lay my diagonal line right across that seam and give these a nice trim here. Okay, now we have eight precise Hasker triangles. So now we are ready to go back to the design board and lay out our fourth block. And we'll go from there. All right, so we need to get our fourth block laid out. And for me, this is the really fun part. I just, I love the design part and, and the layout and I just, and the piecing, that's all me. So um, I would know that I want to make my four blocks different, uh, but I want them all to kind of match. I don't want them to be super different than each other. Uh, and I really like the three layouts that I have already. So as I said before, I really don't, um, I just think that this is too much contrast. So I think I'm going to go with a, a green square in all four of them. So um, I've got that. That's a good start at least. I got my half square triangles here. So we know where they need to go. You know, I think I like that layout. Um, I think it's just enough different from these other three over here. And uh, I think that's gonna make a, make a really nice table runner, all, all four of those. So we'll go with that. Um, I guess the next step is to 
get to each of these blocks over to the sewing machine and we can do some more sewing. So I'll see you there. Okay, so we are back at the machine. We are going to get this block sewn together. I'm going to chain piece where possible just to uh, save a little time. And, uh, and that's basically just feeding a couple pieces through before you cut your thread. So I'm able to chain piece these together. And I like to finish the row before I start on the next row. That way I don't get all messed up and get any squares out of order. So we'll get this first row buttoned up here. And I think that goes like that. Okay, that is our last row. So we've got all five of our rows sewn together and we need to give them a good pressing uh, before we sew the rows together. So we'll head over to the ironing board and get that done. Okay, we are back at the ironing board. We are going to iron each row so they all lay nice and flat and then we can sew our rows together. I find that when you iron uh, at this step, instead of just finger pressing, uh, you have a better chance, I have a better chance of uh, lining up my seams if everything's just nice and flat and neatly ironed. So uh, we're also going to try to nest our seams. So I've got all of these seams ironed that way. So I'm going to make all of these go the opposite way. And that is another thing that makes it a lot easier to uh, line up those seams when they all just kind of tuck in and nest together nicely. All right. So that one is going that way. So this one is going to go back that way. And I'm just giving it a slight tug giving the row a slight tug as I go this way, not too much because you don't want to stretch the fabric, uh, but you do want to open up the seams as far as possible uh, before you press them. So that's that. And now this one needs to go back this way. So I'm going to turn it around. I 
just like to press both sides just so they lay nice and flat. All right, that's that. That's going that way. So this one's going to go back this way. Right, wonderful. We are good to go there. Give that one a little press on this side. Okay, this is going to be a super cute block. So I'm going to go grab the pin cushion and we'll just get our rows sewn together here and uh, we'll get on to the next step. All right, we just need to get our rows pinned together, get our seams lined up, and then we can get back over to the machine and sew these rows together. So since we nested those, uh, or since we ironed opposite ways on each row, we can just nest those seams. And I know a lot of people don't like to pin. I totally understand that, but I, I like to pin everything. That's just how I am. So I just like to stick one pin right at each of these seams and then I'm going to pull them out right as the needle on the machine gets to that pin because you don't want to run over your pins. It's not good for your machine. Definitely wouldn't be good for a vintage machine if you uh, were got into the habit of running over pins. So. Uh, let's see, we'll get these two together and then that will just leave our middle row that we need to, to sew on after these are done. Right, one more here. And if your cutting is accurate, if your quarter inch seam allowance is accurate, these will be no problem to line up. They'll just nest right together perfectly. Okay, so I can get these rows sewn together and then I'll come back and uh, get that one on and we should be good to go from there. Alright, so I got my blocks all sewn together and I decided once I got them back up on the wall here that they needed some sashing in between to kind of separate them out. So uh, I got the sashing in here, got a nice little border all the way around and the uh, table runner is done and uh, what we need to do next is to quilt it and get some batting and some backing on it and get it bound all around. So we'll do that in the next video. Um, but for now, I'm just super pleased with how this turned out. Um, it has a really vintage feel and I'm just super glad we were able to achieve that with the vintage Singer machine uh, that we use today. Um, 
I just love how each block is different and uh, just has a, a really nice old fashioned feel to it. So I love it. I think my grandmother would have loved it as well. So uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next video we'll, where we'll uh, get it all finished up. And uh, I have a lot of other uh, projects in, in mind for us to do together. I have several vintage machines uh, that I want to make projects on. So stick around for that. And uh, I will see you on the next one.